It's time in class to start talking about World War II from 1937 to 1945. This war was a great catastrophe and it involved so much of the planet, so many people and so many different things that this lecture is still going to be um, a short summary and uh, there will be details that are missed, but uh, we'll do our best to get through it. World War II was a war of new technology, of movement, of uh, people, and uh, also we can think of it as a total war. And if we go back to our definition from uh, our discussion of World War I of total war, that means not a war in which uh, everyone was fighting each other, but instead a war in which any state that was fighting had to involve everyone and its entire resources, its total economy, just to survive, not necessarily even to win. So this was a total war, and it was the worst conflict in human history. The invasion of Poland is what kicked off what we call World War II in Europe. Uh, that happened in 1939 on September 1st, and you can see here uh, images of that invasion. On the left, uh, German stormtroopers, uh, well, no, German troopers uh, invading Poland uh, near Bigoj uh, on 18th of September. In the middle is an artist's rendering of what we might want to call Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. That is the system the Germans used to create uh, a war of movement in which they softened up uh, all of their targets ahead of their military by sending in the aircraft and then the army would come in with uh, armored weapons particularly tanks followed by soldiers and they would move as quickly as they can and you can see on the right uh, the result of Germany's invasion of Poland in 1939 Great Britain and France had both made it clear to Hitler that if Germany invaded Poland they would declare war and they did quite quickly after Poland was invaded, but there was really nothing they could do given their capabilities and the geographic location of Poland. In Germany and the Soviet Union uh, did exactly what they had agreed to do in the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which is both of them invaded and then after Poland was conquered, they um, moved their soldiers to split Poland right along the Bug River. World War II, as you can see by now, is a war of new weapons and new techniques that revolutionized warfare. And these advances continued throughout the war. We have radar, jet planes, nuclear weapons, new uses for carriers, amphibious forces, uh, almost unbreakable code machines. And these new technological developments made the war far more lethal and gave the war machines of every country uh, the ability to strike into the heart of its enemies uh, and take total war to a new level. Whereas in World War I, civilians could be attacked, but only in a minimal way. In World War II, the attacks on civilians became the main goal. World War II, in many ways, rested on the individual soldier and the leadership of various different groups. Uh, and because of this fact, leadership devised new ways to communicate en masse to its populations. No matter which state was fighting, the radio became a critical mechanism for broadcasting both news and propaganda. Uh, major technological changes, including atomic weapons, new methods of transport, faster ships, uh, tanks that could move much faster and shoot more effectively than World War I tanks. All of these things uh, made, meant that states had more capabilities than they had even 20 years before in World War I and uh, in fact had the ability to reach and propagandize greater numbers of their citizens as well. Germany was the first to take uh, the f most advantage of these new technologies and Japan though uh, did as well. In Europe, the Nazis staged uh, an incident which allowed them to invade Poland on September 1st, and their Blitzkrieg was able to crush Poland within two weeks. The British declared war on September 3rd, but there was really no movement on the Western Front uh, because the British couldn't reach Poland, and so they kind of had to wait until 
uh, Germany moved towards France or Belgium and there was no movement on the Western Front between the Siegfried Line and the Maginot Line until 1941 uh, or excuse me, 1940, and uh, this meant, or this was what we call Sitzkrieg. When in 1940, uh, in April, the Nazis attacked Western Europe, they were able to take it in six weeks. This is one of history's most successful military campaigns, and nearly at the same time, Denmark, Norway, Holland, Belgium, and Luxembourg fell, leaving France and Britain helpless. France and Britain attempted to fight the Germans, but it turned into a rearguard action as the German war machine was both larger and more powerful than what the British and French could put up against them at the very early stages of the war in 1940. And the Germans pushed the combined British and French force to a beach near Dunkirk on the coast of France between uh, or at the English Channel. Uh, and uh, for some reason, the Germans moved very slowly and didn't deliver a death blow. Um, and as the soldiers, 335,000 of them, were sort of trying to fight their way and hold on at the beach near Dunkirk, Dunkirk uh, the English Navy and uh, English uh, boat owners, etc., uh, gathered together and went and, and got them from the beaches in a very daring and dangerous set of uh, evacuations that eventually saved 335,000 men. Now this left uh, nearly 200,000 soldiers still in Dunkirk, many of whom were captured by the Germans and or killed. The victory of the Germans at Dunkirk was just the beginning of uh, the attack on France after Belgium fell. Paris was captured in June of 1941, and the uh, French uh, military moved back to a demarcation line and then um, set up a new government of uh, France, uh, unoccupied France, in the small resort town of Vichy, which was headed by a French general by the name of Marshal Pétain. Uh, and then um, Charles de Gaulle, who disagreed that uh, there should be any peace between the French military and the Germans, uh, fled to London to uh, create a free French government, which was in opposition to the uh, unoccupied France, uh, the unoccupied French Vichy government. Only at this point, Britain remained in Europe to oppose Hitler, and Great Britain was in danger of collapsing. Uh, the Nazis had planned a cross-channel assault, and in order to prepare the ground for that cross-channel assault, they began attacking Great Britain by air. Uh, this attack was known as the Battle of Britain, and the British eventually were able to build enough aircraft and uh, fight the Germans effectively enough in the air that they were able to defeat the uh, German Air Force and uh, keep the attack from going forward. The, the attack was canceled and Great Britain was left uh, to sort of wither on the vine and uh, Hitler and his German government really fully expected Great Britain eventually to capitulate, but the United States was able to help Britain by providing supplies and uh, eventually military hardware and help. During the period of the spring of 1941, uh, Hitler strengthened his position in the Balkans, which is this territory right here. Um, he was hampered by Mussolini's failure in Greece and eventually had to uh, fight the British and the Greeks in Greece in order to uh, take control of that and um, had also to overrun Yugoslavia. Uh, in order to take control of that territory. But by the spring of 1941, Germany controlled most of Europe and only Portugal and uh, Switzerland and Spain and Ireland uh, and Turkey remained neutral in this war. Some of the neutrals were able to profit from the war uh, and their profiteering may have prolonged the war by doing business with uh, Hitler and also by uh, helping um, helping the Nazis to, to capture resistors, etc. So um, war profiteering and uh, the favoring of the Nazi state by 
these neutral states in many cases uh, may have kept the war going. The war also uh, was fought in northern Africa, particularly along the Mediterranean coast, where from 1941 through late 1942, the British uh, attempted with very little success to keep the Germans out of North Africa. And uh, that would change eventually as uh, American supplies and eventually American troops and African soldiers helped the British uh, to take back northern Africa from the Germans. The German force in North Africa was quite small compared to what the British and eventually the Americans had available to them. In Asia, meanwhile, the war for China had begun in 1937 when Japan invaded uh, from Manchuria. And uh, then in 1941, the Japanese, who we've looked at already, had decided to attack into Southeast Asia for two particular reasons. Number one, uh, the idea was to attack the United States in Pearl Harbor in order to disable its fleet so the Americans couldn't uh, stop the Japanese attack. And then to take areas in Southeast Asia, number one, for their resources, and number two, to create a cordon line that uh, the Japanese believed might be able to keep the American fleet out of Japanese conquered territories even after the U.S. had rebuilt. Also in 1941, the uh, Soviet Union was attacked by Adolf Hitler, who had promptly declared his alliance with Japan and declared war on the United States uh, immediately after Japan's attack on the United States. He then, for reasons that are still not completely agreed upon by historians, uh, he attacked the Soviet Union with whom he had a, a peace treaty and from whom he was already receiving uh, the supplies, particularly oil and steel, that he needed to keep his war machine going. But he attacked anyway, moving towards Leningrad, uh, also towards Moscow and into uh, the Ukraine, past Kiev, and towards uh, Rostov and Stalingrad. The uh, goal appears to have been to take out the Moscow uh, political center of Russia, which was uh, right here, and then also to take control of agriculture and oil fields in this territory, uh, as well as deny the Soviet, uh, the Soviet Union access to the Crimea and its naval bases there. Um, and then eventually also to defeat the Soviets at Leningrad in order probably to um, provide for the defense of German control of Norway. So the Germans attacked uh, in June of 1941, but they were very quickly slowed down, and this uh, eventually proved to be their death knell. Their offensive was halted by the early winter of 1941, and uh, the Soviets restocked with their own manufacturers. Uh, their factories were very safe beyond the Urals, and then uh, they also had uh, access to lend-lease supplies from the United States. And so the Soviets were able to restock and in 1942 begin a counterattack that would eventually push the Germans back into Germany. The United States entered the war when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941, and uh, then the United States began to take the Axis threat very seriously. It passed the Lend-Lease Act of 1941, which allowed it to provide military supplies to its allies fighting against the Axis in Europe as well as in Asia. Uh, it installed a peacetime draft, and then when the Pearl Harbor attack occurred, um, Japan's expansionist policies brought the United States into war. After, the, uh, after Tokyo's atrocities in China during the 1930s, the United States had struck, struck back from, with economic penalties. And so the Japanese had, uh, in response, and for the strategic mention, reasons I mentioned earlier, uh, launched a su successful surprise attack against Pearl Harbor. The United States declared war on Japan on December 8th of 1941, and four days later, Germany declared war on the United States. And uh, this led eventually to uh, what really was a world war. 26 nations were united to fight the Axis by January of 1942. By the time we get to 1942 in the summer, you can see that the uh, largest 
size of the axis powers is right here in black. Uh, this is as big as they got. But the United States in the Pacific was able to triumph at the Battle of Coral Sea and then the Battle of Midway turned the tide in the Pacific War. The United States sank a large number of Japanese ships and broke the Japanese carrier force. Uh, they were able to do this because they had broken the Japanese code and knew where to find, in a rough sense, the Japanese carrier force that was moving towards Midway. Um, at the same time, the United States began what General MacArthur called the island hopping campaign, in which the United States Marines were sent ashore on strategic islands to take major links in the Japanese military chain, but to skip over large numbers of the Japanese military and essentially cut them off from supply and command and control. So this island hopping campaign was extremely successful in cutting off much of the Japanese military and uh, isolating it so that the United States had to deal with an ever decreasing force size. In Europe, the British and the American troops drove the Nazis from Africa, and then they took Sicily and began marching up the boot of Italy. Uh, Mussolini was eventually stripped of his office in 1942 and or 1943 excuse me and then rescued by the nazis but uh, he was eventually recaptured and hanged by italian uh, resistors and uh, germany ran into a turning point in russia when uh, the russian army successfully cut off the german sixth army completely surrounding and destroying it in the battle of solingrad um, by Doing this, the Germans were unable to reconstitute their entire Sixth Army and lost most of their armor in Europe. And this meant that they were um, already at the end of the war. They just had a, a long period of fighting down to go, but there was no way that they were going to be able to defeat the Allies after this point. Hitler uh, had attacked Stalingrad apparently because he was obsessed both with the fact that it had the name of Joseph Stalin and it was run by a communist state and Hitler was quite anti-communist, but also uh, because Stalingrad was both a factory center and the uh, access gateway to major oil fields in the Soviet Union that Hitler believed uh, ownership of would allow him to uh, keep his army moving. So in order to try and take Stalingrad, he sacrificed the entire Sixth Army and by doing this uh, really crippled his entire force and wasn't able to, to win the war. In fact, uh, by the time you get into 1943, the Soviets had begun liberating much of Eastern Europe and the Soviets would eventually defeat about 75% of the German army as they pushed their way through Eastern Europe into Germany. The Allies assisted with this on D-Day in June 6th of 1944, um, and Paris was liberated by August. Uh, the drive forward from the beaches was limited actually only by the Battle of the Bulge, a, a breakout in 1944 in which the German army looked like they might be able to break through the Allied lines, come up behind, and uh, eventually stop the Allied attack. But uh, the Allies were able to uh, to stop the Battle of the Bulge, partly because they controlled the skies, and eventually that control of the skies allowed the Allies to devastate Germany, destroy its manufacturing capacity, um, and um, create a situation in which German resistance was only going to be uh, declining from 1944, or throughout 1944. Eventually, uh, as the Soviet Union's um, soldiers rolled into Berlin, Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his private bunker, and uh, this was really the end of the war for the Germans. Germany surrendered in April of 1944. Excuse me, 1945. At the end of the surrender, the uh, leaders of the Allied powers began planning for the peace. Actually, they began planning as early as 1943. They met at Yalta on the Black Sea. They met again in Tehran. And then they met in Potsdam to come up with detailed plans, both for how to deal with uh, global borders and uh, deployment of forces at the end of the war, and also how to create a lasting peace. 
and this led to a series of political changes that will become critically important when we look at the Cold War. The Allies also liberated uh, concentration camps that uh, have come to be known as the center of what we call the Holocaust today. Uh, they did this as they were invading Germany both from the Russian side and from the Western side. They found concentration camps that were operated in Belsen, Buchenwald, Dachau, Auschwitz and many other places. Um, they recognized that most of these prisoners were um, Jewish but there were also prisoners who were uh, officers from various allied states. There were also prisoners who were uh, considered to be uh, not capable of being um, useful to the German Empire and uh, groups that are of other ethnic groups as well. And Germans had exploited them as laborers. Uh, they had provided inadequate food, tortured these prisoners, and even uh, done medical experiments on them and executed large numbers of them. This was uh, part of the final solution to what was called the Jewish question. Uh, and it was handled by uh, Heinrich Himmler and Reinhard Heydrich. Uh, the Jewish question was based on Hitler's idea of nationalism and the sense that Jews were in some way polluting the German race and therefore had to be gotten rid of. And the eventual final solution was the idea of trying to exterminate the Jews. Um, the Nazis came very close to this. As far as we know, there were about 7 million Jewish people who were put into these concentration camps and 6 million of them died. Many of them were killed in gas chambers and then cremated. Millions more died for starvation, from starvation. We'll never know the exact numbers, but from 1939 until the end of the war, at least 6 million Jews and possibly 6 million non-Jews perished in Nazi-occupied territories because of the Holocaust. The United States was able to end the war with Japan uh, in large part because of its development of the atomic bomb and its use of the atomic bomb on Japanese civilian centers, uh, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945. The use of these bombs was the last straw and uh, gave the Japanese government motivation to accept the United States offer of unconditional surrender. The Americans captured Japanese islands uh, of Tarawa, Kwajalein, Saipan, and the Battle of Leyte Gulf, which was possibly the greatest naval engagement in history, which ended the threat of the Japanese fleet. But the Japanese, as I noted in the last slide, had refused to surrender. Uh, and uh, even though they projected um, that it might be impossible to stop the American invasion, they were determined to resist American invasion of the main islands, even if it meant the end of the Japanese race. The Americans were aware of this and projected high casualty rates if they eventually had to invade Japan. Uh, and these casualty rates led President Harry Truman to decide to drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the results of which you can see here um, in, in these pictures. And those eventually uh, convinced the Japanese government that it needed to surrender. Uh, the emperor and uh, his cabinet who had decided to surrender had to make the surrender announcement, record it, and then secretly race that recording to the National Broadcasting Center in order to prevent the army from stealing the recording and destroying it because the army was determined to fight to the end despite the fact that the emperor and his cabinet had determined that the war should, uh, should end and surrender should happen. So the war ended with the Japanese surrender on September 2nd, 1945. And you can see here the signing of the surrender document on the USS Missouri and the scene in Tokyo Bay on the top left where American fighters and bombers were flying over the American fleet in Tokyo Bay. Now this was important to the Japanese because uh, they recognized that while the war had impoverished Japan and in fact Japan had only one ship left and only uh, less than a hundred uh, flying aircraft, all of which were trainers and not actually fighting aircraft, uh, the United States had become even more powerful during the war. So the Japanese recognized the power of the United States economy uh, as a part of their war fighting capability. In any case, 
The surrender was September 2nd of 1945. Well, there are a number of conclusions we can draw from World War II, and you can see here the pie chart of percentages of deaths. The number of deaths in World War II uh, is impossible to know for sure. Historians have estimated anywhere from 60 to 90 million people, uh, perhaps even higher than that. 58% of those are what we would call allied civilians, and most of those civilians death, civilian deaths occurred in Russia and China. 25% of them are the allied military, 13% are Axis military, and 4% are civilians in Axis countries uh, who were killed. Uh, the question is often about who won and how, and of course the Allies won, uh, but one of the reasons that the Allies won be was because of greater command of resources. The American economy, the Soviet population, and large amounts of land. But what this means, of course, is that um, the industrialization of the United States and Japan and Germany and Russia and France and Britain, all of the industrialized countries grew uh, at an incredibly fast rate and the use of resources, particularly finite natural resources that were used in the production of gunpowder, explosives and um, fertilizer to grow food, became more and more difficult to get and were actually the keys to uh, to the war. Germany, for example, took control of Norway at the very early part of the war, not because Germany desired Norway so much as that Norway was the source of a set of um, iron mines where uh, certain kinds of iron ore that could help produce uh, chemicals that Germany needed to, uh, to create gunpowder uh, were set up or were located. And so uh, this was common throughout uh, the war. Japan conquered much of China in order to get control of resources. Southeast Asia was Japan's target for resources. This is one of the keys to understanding World War II.